Aaron Merce. I'm the founder and executive director of the Aspen Institute Science and Society program. Amid this growing field of civic science, my question for Navadi and for Dietram is how do you see um, people positioning their civic science work in a way that traditional university departments will value those contributions alongside their usual metrics for um, hiring tenure promotion? Great question. Oh, no, please, you first. <laughs> right, I'll take a first stab, and then I'll, uh, you can give the real answer. I'll, I'll try. The, um, I, no, I think it's a great question, Aaron. I, I think it's, a, it's probably one of the most um, pressing questions given uh, for, for folks at least working within academia who, who live up to the same success metrics or have to live up to very traditional success metrics of grants, of other things. Um, I think there's some interesting or some really exciting changes that already have taken place, and this was prior to the civic science movement, certainly in the U.S., where universities have started to rethink how can we actually platform activities that connect meaningfully with the kinds of communities that we have tried to help and work with for a long time. And I think help is already the wrong word here because civic science really asks for a fundamental reorientation, not as academia helps, but academia moves out of two things. One, out of the, its physical spaces, its ivory tower, physical and intellectual spaces, and moves into the spaces where those communities are, number one. I think a second one, and that's just the more difficult one, is we need to move out of our own comfort zones, right? We, we all have communities who we like to work with, but the most urgent and pressing challenges, and this is, I think, again, I'm going to come back to the two, uh, well, forthcoming elections in Germany and the recent elections in the U.S. that have showcased really powerfully the groups we have had the, the worst track record in having meaningful civic engagement with other groups that we most strongly disagree with in terms of values, who we maybe sometimes have visceral reactions to what they stand for, what they think about, but that's why we're, why we're not having that conversation. Um, so how do we build that infrastructure? Partly it is about incentives and, and helping people to do that, um, allowing people to get academic credit for it. And again, I think there are models for what are in some universities called an integrated tenure case. So where as people go up in the US, we have um, what in German would be Verbeamtung. Tenure for us means you go through a bunch of processes and eventually you have permanent employment in order to get there. You can now produce um, materials that, that show that your research excellence is partly for that, that, that level or that standard of research excellence is partly met by work with and in and, and collaborations with communities. Um, Urbana-Champaign has one, Wisconsin, we have one of those, and I know tons of other universities are moving in that direction. I think the much more difficult, um, or maybe the second difficult part, I shouldn't say much more difficult, is the career pathway. And if you look around the table, I think all of us have a very different pathways toward where we are, and none of us were in kindergarten or in elementary school and said, I want to be a civic scientist at some point, right? And nobody, and in this room, like, also probably nobody said, I want to be at falling walls at some point. It's a way of thinking very outside of, of what traditional modes of, of thinking of moving forward is. So the second challenge is, and I think this is where the, the coalition of, of, of funders uh, that, that form the Civic Science Network, really this very broad coalition of different funders, of different partner, uh, partner and host partners, um, of, of groups from very, very different backgrounds that, that pursue this is so exciting because it models for the universities what could be possible if they start to rethink the status quo. And so I think that's where the power of philanthropy is to kind of think about a world that could be rather than changing the world that currently is. And I think that's where, where I think the most promising pathway forward. Great question.